How would you react if a friend, a billionaire investor said, hey man, you gotta get your act together before I put my money into your business. How would you react? So in this episode, my team asked me to watch this video from one of my favorite shows, The Profit, hosted by Mark Lamonis, who's the CEO of Camping World and invests in business and in people. So in this episode, I'm gonna share with you a reaction to how Mark Lamonis coaches entrepreneurs and their business through some tough moments. So let's check this out. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Sapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And I'm fired up about this in terms of how Mark Lissamonis coaches his entrepreneurs that he invests money into. I'm, I'm a big fan of Mark Lissamonis. One day, one day, I'm speaking into life. One day, Marcus, you and I will have a conversation together. I'd love to uh, interview you for our, um, our our Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel and or perhaps you... Uh, grace our stage one day as we hire you as a speaker to talk to our sales force across the nation of independent life insurance agents building their own agencies across the country. But if you haven't done so already, if you're watching us on Facebook, make sure you click like and like our Facebook business page. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notification to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. So let's get right into it. All right, tough love, huh? tough love from Marcus Simonis. Vision Quest must be the name of the business. Yo, You're not clean in this not room. organized. Uh, yes, we are. You should have. How many guys? How many guys go crazy with an unorganized working space? You know, one of the things we learned in the Marine Corps is that organization allows you for to have a clean mind to to to, to allow things to be processed cleanly and, and quickly. Because a smooth is fast, and when you have a disrupted and disorganized workspace, a lot of things get lost in the mix. They call hoarders before you call me. They call hoarders. <laughs> is my attempt to try to diversify the company. Larry, here's what I see here. These boxes are the reason that your business almost stopped. Yeah, because in a lot of businesses where they have to purchase inventory, there's a, what I'm looking at right now is these shelves are stocked with money in the forms of inventory. And because it's unorganized, it's like having unorganized money, because if you have products, and stuff just on the shelves, it's like dead money. Uh, this money is just sitting there, not any, not earning any interest. It's not getting out to uh, end consumer and buyer. It's just wasting a lot of uh, 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 time there sitting on shelves. And I, l just looking at the look on Marcus's face, he's kind of frustrated because if this was his business, you know, there's a lot of dead money here. And if you're financially struggling as an entrepreneur, well, it's because your uh, inability to organize your business. Stopped, died. You put your your family at risk yep. so yep. that what? You can have a warehouse full of crap? Yep. We were speculative. This can't happen ever again. They can't. See, here's the thing about entrepreneurship. As an entrepreneur, it's a very lonely island. He thinks in his mind, he thinks he's doing the best with his company. He's doing the very best with what he knows, with the money that he has, with the ideas and the markets that he's looking to penetrate and capitalize on. But you don't know until you screw up royally and part of being an entrepreneur is making mistakes. And I'm glad that Marcus is in here helping him these type of mistakes because you just don't know what you just don't know and that those type of things will put you out of business. Or if you do know about it, it'll accelerate you in business. There could be a half a million dollars of garbage here. A half a million dollars. Exactly what I was saying. There's a half a million dollars of dead inventory, dead money sitting on his shelves at that very moment, which could be used for products or services that could be bought by a consumer that in essence creates revenue to the company, that in essence then creates jobs, expands departments, expands outreach to help the entrepreneur fix the problems that they were propped up in business to begin, to begin with. A half a million dollars prevented you from getting a new equipment, required you to lay people off, exactly. required you to go into the tuition account, required you to borrow money from your dad, required you to put stuff on your credit card required you to call me exactly what i was it's talking 19 about. years it's 19 years of mistakes sure not being able to turn it around well i'm glad he's honest i'm glad he's honest with himself 19 years i'm glad it's not 39 years i'm glad that he's if he's open to it and we go into honest foods here if he's open to it and he's honest about it he's going to fix it he's going to pivot he's going to adapt he's going to adjust he's not going to let ego uh get the best of him so i wish the well for this guy 
All right, next business here with Tough Love, Honest Foods. I'm so tired and spent. Uh-oh. I know you're tired. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's part of being a business owner, and you know that. That's the choice you make when you own a business. That's the life you sign up for, baby. You're an entrepreneur. Of course you're tired and spent. Otherwise, you sell the business, and hey, just hang out and get a job. It's, by the way, that's okay. But if you say, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to build a business, you are going to be tired. You are going to be spent. That's the life, my friends, that you signed up for. You wanted to be a first-generation cash flow millionaire through the platform of capitalism and entrepreneurship? That's the life you sign up for. Suck it up. And so you drove all night. Yeah, you made the arrangements. We have a $5,000 bill or more here because you didn't get it inspected. Okay, you'll learn from it. You think I'm picking on you. I'm not. But I will tell you that now you know how your people feel. Mmm. So oftentimes as an entrepreneur, your people are telling you, your staff is telling you, the biggest thing about being a CEO is that you listen you know, and, and not letting, get, letting ego get in the, in the middle of your decision-making process for what's best for the company. You know, being a leader is listening. Being a leader is listening and learning about what's going on and adapting to the current situation at hand. And just the way the guy was looking, he was kind of like reading him left and right. I, I got it that he was processing it. So I'm glad he's, he's at least open to understanding what's going on in his business. Again, as an entrepreneur, it's a very, very lonely world, and very rarely, if you're, you know, if, if you're not smart about it, you're not going to have a lot of people telling you what you need to hear, and you, uh, you just would rather hear the things that you want to hear, but as an entrepreneur, you got to have outside counsel, and that's why companies create these things called boards, boards of directors. They create boards, a, a chairman of the board, and people hire people to be part of the board to give them counsel to be responsible for the corporate decisions of that company so therefore a ceo doesn't get over emotional doesn't become a tyrant of their own business and a lot of small businesses just don't have that board and i'm glad marcus simonis has a show called the profit to potentially be that board to be that investor to provide counsel to a struggling business i think women want to maybe imagine themselves on vacation where Maybe they're with their family or they're with their girlfriends so that they're actually with other people around them as well. We've done group photo shoots, but we didn't concentrate on that because that wasn't really where our target was falling into. We rented a yacht, we rented uh, an RV. I want women to feel like this model is on their vacation, kind of just lounging. Charlie, did you pick up on what Lisa said though? I didn't sense that you actually listened to it. She was saying that she rarely, if ever, puts somebody by themselves. Okay, okay, so I'm, I'm not getting the context of where it's at right now, but I guess they're having a, a meeting and uh, apparently the owner is not happy with the execution of one of her folks. That's obviously the project manager of this whole deal. And um, she's sharing her distrust with him or you know, disappointment in him. And Marcus, is, again, is being there as an investor and, and being a, a potential you know, a board type of member providing counsel another voice into the business. So let's, let's see what happens here. Did you, did you understand why she said that though? I don't understand exactly, no. Why, why do you like to use pairing up? I well, she told you, you didn't listen to her. Excuse me. I wanna work on our listening skills. I wanna make sure. Wanna... Mm, <laughs> exactly what we're just talking about. Gotta be a listener in business. And you know, oftentimes when it's your business, your enterprise, your department, you know, uh, um, your heart, your blood, your sweat, your tears, it's very difficult sometimes to uh, be objective about it because sometimes you feel that you're taking it so personally because it's you, you know, you're, you're, the, you're the person being judged right now. But, you know, not, not necessarily though, you know, I, I, I have a relation with my mentor. I, told, I said, Patrick, listen, I'm coming to you because I want to get better. I'm coming to you because I have zero time to waste. I have zero time, zero money to burn. And if you feel the need to guide me and coach because I feel that you have the best interest in heart for me, please tell me. No, no ego here. I'm not going to be defensive about it. I'm just going to adapt. I'm going to adjust. I'm going to implement. And it's the last time you bring it up to me. Hard thing for a lot of people to do. I want to make sure that you're processing these things. Charlie, can you grab a, a brochure of ours to show them what it, what it would look like? Well, you didn't bring it with you. With not prepared. Okay. Grab some furniture. New, brand new. That's a $1,700 chair. Okay. Ooh, he oh. just—he just, wait, hold up. He just—he just took a—he just took a, uni, a utility knife to a seventeen hundred dollar piece of furniture. He just ripped open the cushion here with that knife. What do you see that's interesting about that cushion? This shouldn't be seamed here. Why is it seamed there? Okay, he's, he's quality control. He's QCing it. If people are paying seventeen hundred dollars for a piece of furniture, he's making sure that the product out there meets the standards and qualities of somebody would expect if they. 
spend $1,700 on a chair. It was seen because sometimes we make things work. Hey, sorry, we, we wanted to make it work, so we're gonna give you a half, literally a half ass cushion. Yep. It covers half your ass. Right. <laughs> half ass cushion should be for half price. Right. This is uh, not our best foot forward. It's in your showroom. Why is it in here? Good. All right, you called him out on it. Let him know about the product. And hey, man, can't get a, you can't get away with that one. He's going he's gonna to inspect what he expects. Again, he's being there to stand up for the consumer, to stand up for the people that, uh, 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 that buy from his business because he wants to make sure that they feel good sleeping at night as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, because they're actually putting out a product of what people are paying for. So good job. Unique salon and spa. I mean, the place looks like a disaster. Mm, this is how all the dispensaries look. Nasty. Again, unorganized. This is how we do dirty. our inventory system. We put the cans in here and we reorder based on what comes out of that. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing here no system. She, she's, she's saying that's our inventory system based on what's in the trash. There's no barcode. There's no sign out. There's no computer digital way to have inventory. In other words, this is, again, an example of the first business where a lot of money is just being thrown away because... There's really no system to see what's actually purchased, what's being used, and what's being thrown away. Because who knows? You might have employees there. There might be, you know, an open locker like this, an open um, uh, access to uh, uh, inventory. Who knows? You might have employees in there just scooping stuff, putting it in their bag. And the only way you inventory is based on a trash. So you count the empty bottles. And that's what you order. What about people th uh, thieves that are stealing from your business? That could be a potential um, hemorrhaging of cash out of your out of your business. You don't know what you have in here, do you? No, I have no idea. That is the single biggest reason mm -hmm. that your general manager should be fired. See, at the end of the day, you know, you have to hold your people accountable. At the end of the day, it's, if you're the business owner, you're the CEO of your business, it falls on your shoulders. You're responsible for it. And if person that you hire, that you're paying hard earned money, that you're earning as an entrepreneur, that you're earning as a business, if they're not following through on their obligation to receive your salary and get the job done, then you're right. They should be fired and move on and find, uh, find the next one who's capable of actually doing the job that you trust. Okay, with that being said, guys, uh, a lot of stuff here learned from Marcus Simonis as we wrap up. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts about entrepreneurship? What are your thoughts about being called out in business? You know, oftentimes people say, you know, I'm the, I'm the king of my island. I'm the king of my paradise. I'm the king of this jungle. But when you're doing something wrong, how do you take counsel? How do you take tough love? I want to know. By the way, guys, I'm excited about these business shows that uh, people have different opinions on. Who do you think we should react to next? Should be Shark Tank? Should be another uh, profit uh, show by Marcus Simonis? Should be uh, Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares? Let me know what type of business shows you watch that you would love to see a reaction from me here on our YouTube channel, Seven Figure Squad, to help you think like a millionaire, to help you strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. That being said, guys, if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our episode. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure to click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. That being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy. Until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.